So the first section is really just graphing or um, giving me the inequality when you are given a graph, okay? So really simple. Um, you're just looking at it and telling me what's going on here. So the way I tell you to look at these is, <clears throat> especially when your variable's on the right-hand side, just think, is my variable bigger or smaller than my number? That's how you want to interpret these. This right here variable um, on the right sometimes confuses people when they graph it because they're used to that being flipped. They're used to the variable always being on the left. So when I look at this, I'm gonna say, well, based on this, my variable is bigger than my four. Look and see which part of your greater than less than is facing your variable. The open part of your, of your greater than less than is facing the variable. So that means your variable is bigger than four. So your graph is going to be larger than four, even though this is a less than sign, okay? Because the variable piece of it is larger than the number. So we are gonna start on the four. This is going to be an open circle because I do not have my extra little or equal to. So I'm gonna to go to positive four and put an open circle. And then my variable is larger than four. So I'm gonna highlight everything that is bigger than four. So I'm gonna to go to the right of this and then put an arrow to indicate that it just keeps going. So if I were to rewrite this, I would have to keep it the large piece of it pointing to the K and the smaller piece pointing to the four. And you can see that the K is larger than the four. All right, so look at this next one. You can pick whatever variable you want. You are going to write a variable. You are obviously starting at negative one. And then you have to decide, is the graph smaller than negative one or larger than negative one? Well, it's everything to the left, so it is smaller. And then you have to decide, does it include the negative one or does it not? And in this case, it does not include the negative one, open circle, so I would leave it just like this. I would not put the extra or equal to with an open circle there. So for these, I will give you room to work them out. So I would put them where you can actually have room to work them out. Um, and then you are solving them just like you would your equations. My first step here would be to subtract that three. So if I subtract the three, four minus three gives me a one. I still have this greater than sign. And then I have K over nine, all right? And then K is being divided by nine. So I am gonna multiply both sides by that nine. It will cancel here and I will get nine is greater than k, all right? So when I graph this, I'm gonna start at positive nine with an open circle because it does not include it. And then I'm gonna to have to decide, is my k smaller than nine or bigger than nine? Well, the small end of my greater than sign is pointing to the variable. So that means my variable or my graph is smaller than nine, which means I'm going to graph everything that is smaller than nine. Next one, you can see they're getting a little bit more difficult. So again, you wanna make sure you have room to work it out. Don't try to just scoot it all at the top there. Um, you want to do exactly what you would do to solve this with an equation. You want to distribute. Distribute your seven, seven times four B and seven times negative five is less than or equal to negative 147. We would add 35 to both sides. All right, over here I have my 28B. I still have less than or equal to. Here this is a negative and a positive, so you are subtracting. You are going to have a negative because my larger absolute value is negative, but you are subtracting those, so you should get 112 there. All right, so make sure that you subtract correctly. Then your final step would be to divide by 28. It does not matter that that 112 is negative. What I am dividing by is positive. So I do not flip the sign here. It stays less than or equal to. Negative 112 divided by 28 is actually negative four. It goes in evenly. So I have B is less than or equal to negative four. I will go to negative four on my graph, do a closed circle and everything's smaller.
So these will either have an or or an and, or they may be joined together with notation or just the ands can be all one, all right? So this is an or, you are gonna solve them individually. So again, make sure that you take the time to put them somewhere where you can solve them individually, okay? Because you want to have both answers. I need to see your greater than, less than, your inequality, and I need to see your graph. So this first side, the left one, I'm gonna divide both sides by negative nine. I get n because I divided by a negative, that will switch and I get negative one. And then I am gonna do the other one. I'm gonna subtract six from both sides. This one does not flip, it's greater than or equal to three. And this is an or. So I just graph both of them on my graph. If they were to cross over, then I can decide what my graph needs to look like. But if they go opposite directions, like this one, then you can just graph both of them. Start at negative one, it's going to be a closed circle because it is or equal to, and n is less than, so I go this direction. For this one, I start at positive three, also a closed circle, and n is greater than positive three, so I go that way. This whole thing is my answer. I am looking for these two statements and this graph as the answer. Okay, so I need the inequalities and the graph of your inequalities as your answer. Once again, I am gonna do these individually. This is an and, so I, when I graph these, I need to see where they cross each other. But again, you wanna make room to make sure that you answer them individually. So for this first one, I'm gonna subtract that one from both sides. I will get two X is less than or equal to 20. Divide by two, I will get x is less than or equal to 10. Over here, I'm gonna subtract an eight. I get negative seven x is less than negative seven. And then divide by negative seven x, this does flip, is greater than positive one. All right, so <clears throat> if you look at this, your one is smaller than your x. Everybody see that? And your x is smaller than your 10. So if the smallest number is smaller than x and the biggest number is bigger than x, then x is gonna fall in between them when you graph them. And so if I were to graph these just underneath it, like open circle at one and x is bigger, and then close circle at 10 and x is smaller, you can see that it's gonna cross over in between. And so that's why you'll often see your answers um, one is less than X, which is less than or equal to 10. You'll see your answer written that way. You do not have to write it that way. You can certainly leave it as two, right? And so this whole thing could be it, or you can write it as one. But either way, your graph needs to be an open circle at one, a closed circle at 10, and everything in between it needs to be highlighted. This one does not have the word and, but anytime it's a group less than a group less than another group, it is an and when it is all pushed together. This is the only time you will not see a word or a symbol. This means and, okay? Now, the reason I pulled this is because you have variables all the way around. So you want to split these up. When you have something like this, you want to do the left two and do that as a problem. And then you want to do the right two and do that as a problem, and do it as an and problem. All right? Because it will get very confusing with your variables going around everywhere, all right? So you want to um, split it up into two and solve them individually. As far as solving goes, you're gonna do it the same way you would. Get variables to one side, numbers to the other, just like you would on any problem. So I would subtract that 6v over um, I would then subtract my three to the other side, right? And I'm gonna get nine minus six, three V, bring down your inequality, negative nine minus three is negative 12. Again, it does not matter what that negative 12 is. What I am dividing by determines if I flip it. In this case, I am dividing by a positive three, so this guy does not flip. Negative 12 divided by positive three is negative four. Then I'm gonna do the other side. I'm going to get my variables to one side. 
I am going to get my numbers to the other side, right? Six minus eight is negative two. Bring down my inequality. Seven and nine gives me 16. Divide both sides by a negative two. Here I am dividing by a negative. So flip that sign. We have a negative eight. You'll see that the smallest number is smaller than the variable which is also smaller than the largest number. All right, so you can see that when you do this, your graph is going to be an open circle on the eight, an open circle on the negative four, and everything in between. And again, you can graph it right from these two. You do not have to rewrite it if you don't want to. Um, your final graph, though, needs to only be where they cross. Your final graph needs to be only where they cross.